Hej hej, Kenneth Lund her. Velkommen til uh, altså Living Smart TV Road Tour, er jeg lige ved at sige. 2013. 2013 ja. og 14. Ja. Vi er på besøg i uh, AV Connections Odense butik den her gang, Tommy. Vi plejer at være nede og besøge nede i vi. Sønderborg, men til de, der nu ikke har set nogen af de klip, så er vi jo i gang med at lave en serie omkring hjemmebiograf. Nemlig. Til dem, der ikke har set det, hvem er det så lige, du er lige? Jeg står hos AV Connection for marketing, PR, det vil sige så få ordet ud, få folk til at forstå, at der findes andet uden bare små kompakte iPhone-løsninger, der findes rigtig godt ja, hi-fi stadigvæk, så det skal jeg ud til folket. Ja, lige præcis. Og det hjælper I jo meget godt med. Lige præcis, og, og vores serie synes jeg er et super spændende emne, det her med hjemmebiografer og sådan noget. Jeg tror mange, nu har vi jo indtil videre lavet to udsendelser, vi har lavet den omkring surround-lyd, yes. og vi har lavet en om projekter og lærere, yes. og jeg tror mange har været sådan lidt, øh, ej, jeg ved ikke om jeg kan sige imponeret, men jeg tror mange har været overrasket over, at man kan for, for måske ikke helt så mange penge, som folk tror, der kan man faktisk lave en rigtig fed lille hjemmebiograf selv. Nu står der jo 35 tomme stole her foran os, og det gør der jo, fordi der kommer publikum på. Stadig tomme, ja. Stadig tomme? Stadig tomme. Fordi lidt senere, så kommer der jo publikum på. Hvad er gerne. det, de skal se? I dag har vi jo, som du selv siger, vi har haft projekterne op, vi har haft surround-receiverne op, så vi mangler egentlig det sidste element i en hjemmebiograf. Vi mangler at få højtalerne op. Ja. Og det vil sige, at der er så meget i højtaler, fordi alle sammen bygger højtaler forskelligt. Så det er slet ikke noget, vi selv vil gå ind på. Vi har hentet nogle rigtig, rigtig eksperter hjem. Så vi har hentet nogle hjem fra USA, fra SVS, firmaet SVS, der altså også bygger de her højtaler. Og de kommer her hele vejen fra USA og fortæller om deres højtaler og generelle højtaleropbygning i dag. SVS, det forbinder jeg faktisk med surround biograflyd. Det kan du også roligt gøre, fordi det er det. De har valgt at sige, at vi gider ikke lave de her små højtalere, små, hvide, fine højtalere til køkkenet. Vi laver biograf-højtalere. Ja. Store højtalere, der leverer noget bas, der leverer noget lyd. Mm. Nødvendigvis ikke de kønneste højtalere i verden, men yderst, yderst effektive og velklingende. Så. Ja, lige præcis. Er det kun højtalere, eller nu, fordi nu står der også noget anlæg her, men det har ikke noget med dem at gøre. De laver så ikke selv den slags. Nej. Det er højtalerne hos selv, de taler om, og subwoofer. Ja. Masser af subwoofer. Ja. Det er jo det, de er kendt for. Ja, okay. Ja, super fedt. Jamen, yes. øh, lad os, øh, nu, vi, vi afventer jo lige nu, at øh, amerikanerne de flyver ind. Yep. Jack og Gary. Jack og Gary. Yes. Hva, er de, laver de, er det dem, der står og snikkererer det? Det er jo er, egentlig det er CEO'en, altså ham, der har selve SVS. Ja, okay. Og så er der hans, øh, hans selvchef, ja, okay. Jack. Så det er fedt. de to, der kan ja, så må vi gå ud fra, det. Ja, de, de ved noget om det, ja. det må vi gå ud fra. Præcis. De kommer jo her og fortæller lidt om det, og, øh, og vi håber jo lidt på også, måske vi kunne få lidt interview med dem, og, og høre sådan, øh, måske også lidt om baggrunden for, hvad de laver. Ja. De har, ja, amerikanske firmaer har altid en god, de er altid de er gode til at fortælle historien om øh, sådan, hvordan det hele er startet. De er, startet, er går rigtig højt op i deres ja, historie, det er også spændende at høre. Så. Fedt, fedt. Yes. Jamen, øh, jamen, lad os, øh, vi, vi kan jo næsten ikke gøre andet nu, end at lave sådan, ligesom sådan i tv-køkkenet, sådan en trylleslag, og så sige, at vi har snydt lidt, og så puff, så er der lige pludselig, så er der fyldt med folk. så er der publikum. Vi ses lige om lidt. God aften, og tak fordi I alle sammen kunne komme. I er jo kommet rigtig mange, det er rigtig dejligt at se. Mit navn er Tommy, jeg er nede fra Sønderborg afdelingen, af Connection Sønderborg, så undskyld mit dårlige fynsk. I, I ved jo godt, I kan vinde en subwoofer, men det tager vi først til allersidst. Vi holder på jer så længe vi kan, så det kommer først helt til sidst. Men til at starte med, så er det hernede, det foregår, hvor Gary fra SVS, han vil fortælle lidt om ja, selve firmaet, og han er kommet hele vejen fra USA, så det foregår på engelsk. Er der nogen, der ikke kan engelsk? Fantastisk. Godt. Jamen, uh, it's up to you now, Gary. But I have no idea what you said. Just nice words. Just nice words. Everything was so nice. Just hopefully it was something nice. <laughs> it was. So good evening to everyone. Thank you so. I feel very honored. Thank you so much for coming to to uh, experience uh, SVS with uh, the wonderful people at AV Connection, and and I, I really want to thank Ronnie and his team for inviting me to come here and speak to you. And so to be absolutely sure that. We fulfill uh, your expectations for this evening. I would like to ask you to tell me what you would like to get out of this evening, what you would like to learn or find out about this evening. Uh, I'll, I'll throw out some ideas. Learn more about subwoofers. <laughs> Hopefully, learn more about home theater, two-channel audio, audio technology, Speaker technology, are those interesting topics? Home theater versus two-channel, and maybe learn a little bit about SVS, some ideas? Great. Anything I, I missed that I should talk about tonight? So I have one question for you before I get started. Where are your wives? <laughs> That's good. Okay. I'm sorry. So, uh, th again, thank you so much for having me, having me here. Uh, I'm Gary Yakubian. I'm president and I'm managing partner of, of SVS. 
SVS is a, a, an audio company. We're, we're an American company, although we have employees all over uh, North America. Um, and our vision is we're known, we're, we're known for making the world's greatest subwoofers. And especially we're known for making, and I, I didn't come here to brag to you. I'm going to hopefully teach you about subwoofer technology or maybe sh share with you a few things you don't know, sh uh, share with you a few things about speakers you don't know, and maybe uh, you'll, you'll, Im you'll add us to your selection set about uh, uh, subwoofers. But more importantly, I'll, I'll share my vision. Uh, our vision is that uh, world-class audio experiences do not need to be only for the elite. When I started in this industry 25, more than 25 years ago, I started, as did so many of my colleagues, because we had a love for music, for movies, for the experiences that we're going to talk about this evening. And that was the unifying factor. It wasn't that we had lots and lots of money to spend. Perhaps we spent a lot of our own money on this hobby, but it wasn't that we had tens and tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars or a kroner to invest in this hobby or that we were super successful affluent people. We were just passionate about it. And in the time since I started, we've seen the industry change a little bit and maybe some of the passion has been leached out of it. And our vision for, for our company is that these products are so much fun. Audio is so much fun. Home theater is so much fun. And subwoofers are so much fun that everyone should have the ability, if they are passionate about it, not necessarily if they are in the elite 1%, but if they are passionate about it, should have the ability to have world-class experiences. So that's the vision. And I'm going to talk for just briefly... 20, uh, uh, 20 to 30 minutes, and I hope if you have questions that you'll, you'll uh, uh, ask me, and especially if I say something that makes things not so clear, that you'll stop me immediately and say, can you explain that or can you, can you clarify what you meant? So let's talk. I'm going to start with what we are known the most for, which is subwoofers. What does a subwoofer do? Just trying to get you involved now. I start with the easy ones. I could start with the harder ones. Uh, yeah, subwoofer is it's a it's actually a speaker designed to make bass. The the low frequency sounds have the longest length sound waves. Because of that, and and you know this from your own experiences. Because of that, creating bass requires the most air. It requires the most ability to move and control air. So. An outstanding subwoofer would be one that works with a perfect piston-like motion to move the exact amount of air to create the low frequencies that are desired in the program experience and none of the low frequencies that are not desired. And if we do that correctly, then the goal of the home theater is served. And what is the goal of the home theater? I like to say the goal of a home theater is to suspend one's disbelief meaning there's a room where I go, home theater or two-channel system, there's a room where I go in my home where I have created a, an environment where the content almost fools me into thinking that it's really happening there in the room with me, whether it's a two-channel music experience or a multi-channel music experience or a typical, more typical home theater movie-based experience, that, that my belief for an hour, 90 minutes, two hours is suspended, and I almost believe what's happening in the room is really happening. In order for that to happen, the sound coming from the speakers needs to be as faithfully rendered as possible. The dynamics and excitement and emotional content of the sound needs to be rendered to me so that I can feel that experience at the same time as the characters on the screen are feeling it or as the musicians who are playing the music are experiencing it. And the bass, for example, that the subwoofer creates needs to be impactful, dynamic, palpable. And therefore, it starts to convince me that what's going on in that room is really happening. How does a subwoofer do it? Well, uh, we have uh, multiple ways of, of uh, 
configuring a subwoofer, but there's two basic families of subwoofers. Does anyone care to take a guess of what they are? I'll give you a hint. One of them is big, the other one not so big. Yes, sir. Uh, the box exactly, exactly. Uh, this subwoofer, which in case you didn't notice, is big. This, this subwoofer is a ported box. And the ports are these holes. But they're much more than holes. They're actually carefully tuned to the frequencies that the subwoofer is designed to render to you in the room. And the cabinet volume, meaning the air that's inside the volume, is greater. And because of that, the greater cabinet volume, the ability of the air to move out of the, of the port in a particularly uh, tuned and, and uh, calibrated way, the subwoofer creates bass. And what a subwoofer is, is an ecosystem. It's an ecosystem of a carefully designed and optimized driver. And this, this 13 and a half inch driver is totally amazing. And I, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but it, that driver alone weighs more than most entire subwoofers, including the cabinet. And the reason is it's built like a tank because it needs to control that firm motion of moving the air. And when the air needs to stop moving, it needs to control the stop motion of the driver. And if it does that correctly, and you're going to be able to experience that upstairs when we do our demos, the bass is tight, deep, and as loud as it needs to be for the program content or for your personal preference. You marry that driver to an amplifier. This, this subwoofer has a 1000 watt class D amplifier. You know that's a lot of power. But on demand, the power that it's capable of rising to is actually more than 3,000 watts for peak power needs. So we create an ecosystem of amplifier, digital signal processing, and driver optimization that uh, creates the end result of this PB13 Ultra, which gets, uh, although it's not an inexpensive subwoofer, routinely gets compared, and you can see this with your own validation on the internet with subwoofers two and three times its price. What's the primary objection of a ported subwoofer? I bet you know the answer, yeah. Sometimes you get a, a noise from the voice. Well, that's actually, I would call that, that's, a, that's an objection that is known. One way you, you, you l limit the noise is you make giant ports like this, but you're, that's called chuffing, and you're right. But the typical reason, well, who, who, yeah, it's so huge. It's so huge visually. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we don't, they're not here. We, we, we shouldn't talk about them, but, but <laughs> neither is mine, by the way. So we can't talk about them. But th that, is the, that is the primary objection, is that they're, they're just large. So a sealed box creates a subwoofer experience in a small box. Why doesn't everyone just get that then what's the disadvantage to a sealed box it needs, it, it so loud. that's exactly right they're, they're typically not able to cr to uh, 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 play as loud and so, and typically not able to uh, create as deep uh, bass extension now we try to to fight the laws of physics as much as we can so we took this same driver that's in this PB 13 ultra and the same amplifier that's in this, and we put it in, this is a huge box. My idea of a compact box is the 17 inch box you're gonna see upstairs. We took those same, that same driver, same amplifier, optimized it to a sealed application and put it in our SB13 Ultra, which is upstairs, which we launched at the end of last summer and has gotten more reviews than any other product in our history. And I, I would make the case that it's gotten more reviews in the last two years than any other subwoofer. Uh, it's been our most successful product launch. And the reason is, oh, it is possible with careful engineering and really top quality driver and amplifier to create what we would call an extreme experience, just an ultimate subwoofer base experience in a package that can fit in most rooms. And that's what the, the SB13 Ultra represents. And you'll hear that uh, uh, upstairs when we do our home theater demo. Did you have a question, sir? Uh, yeah. Just, sorry for being a novice here, but normally when you see a full range loudspeaker, then to my perception, if it's a huge box, then it's not vented. And if it's a smaller bookshelf, um, 
speaker, then normally it's vented because the the, the <laughs> ventilation gives a, a deeper ba deeper base. Right. But it seems to be quite the opposite with with um, subwoofers. So. Um, there's no right way to design a speaker. A ported, uh, 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 a, ported, yes. a, a, a ported speaker is a bass reflex design, and that is typically, for example, this speaker, which I did want to talk about, so thank you for bringing it up. This is our Ultra Tower that we launched earlier this year. This speaker has three enclosures, actually. It's a three and a half wave speaker, one mid range enclosure, sealed. Second mid-range enclosure, also crossed over at a different point, sealed. Dual 8-inch woofers in their own sub-enclosure, ported. This is a large speaker, you would agree. And the design is optimized for ported. What you will find is, for, for the purposes of this design, a base reflex was the perfect one. Um, Bowers and Wilkins, which you've heard of, they have their 800 series. They're huge speakers. They're... They're this big and they're even fatter. They're this fat. They're ported in the base, sealed in the mid range. It, uh, so, it, 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 which is the right approach? I think speakers are truly, once you create one that delivers the correct frequency response, correct voicing to create an, a, a, a believable experience, then at a certain point, that last 5% becomes a matter of personal preference, in, in my opinion. Subwoofers are different, though. Subwoofer, and one reason why companies can create success across all kinds of different channels, markets in the world in subwoofers is 90% of what a subwoofer does can be measured. Uh, there is a measurement statistic called CEA 2010. It measures how the subwoofer behaves at all different frequencies, all the way down to the frequencies below what you can hear, and up to the frequencies where you no longer want to hear the subwoofer creating it, where it's better that the subwoofer shuts up than delivers frequency. Because one of the, one of the things I probably should say from the outset, one of the neat things about a subwoofer is it exploits a human failing. And that failing is we cannot perceive the directionality of bass. Because we cannot perceive the directionality of bass, one subwoofer can deliver all the bass for two speakers or five speakers or seven speakers or nine or even ten speakers. One subwoofer can do it. But only if it only delivers bass. If it makes mistakes and starts delivering bass above the frequencies where we, no longer where we now can detect directionality, all of a sudden it's not creating bass for all the speakers in the system. It's creating bass in the direction that you hear coming from the subwoofer. We lose that sense of believability. Does that make sense? So subwoofers are fun. I'm so blessed to be in a company that's known for our subwoofers because people get passionate about it. They fight about it. They take it. They sit out in the middle of January in places like Norway on their yard because you have you can't measure a subwoofer indoors you have to do it outside because the waves are so long they sit out in the freezing cold and measure their subwoofers to see how they perform at different frequencies and then post them on the forums to prove whose subwoofer was better and this is the this is the world that our brand has been validated by out in the out in the world you can you can see this in especially in the US forums where these guys are just absolutely nuts but it does inspire a lot of passion and it does validate the performance of the product subwoofers to me are not a matter of personal taste they're a matter of investment in engineering components and performance and you know as I said at the beginning and I believe this in my bones a lot of audio these days is built to a minimum level of performance perhaps a visual ap appearance that is pleasing to the eye, profit for the retailer, sorry, Ron Ronnie, don't kick me out, um, and, and um, not necessarily, everyone wins, right, except the customer, the person who buys the product. So our, our vision is to, to uh, kind of turn that on its ear and create those kind of experiences. So anyway, that's our high end of our subwoofer line. Um, what we did uh, at the very beginning of this year as well, in addition to launching these speakers, which are at the high end of our speaker lineup, we launched these two subwoofers. These two subwoofers were breakthrough products for us. Uh, Ronnie, can you, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. How, the price range of these subwoofers in, in Denmark? Uh, the start of it, 4100 for, for them in the 
4199 um, for, for the one in, in the wood cabinet, and the white one is uh, 4799. Right. right, and then this one is a 40, 40, uh, as well, 4100, correct? Uh, it's uh, also uh, 4799. Okay, so what we wanted to do with this range is different than what we wanted to do with this range. In this range, we wanted to create the best possible subwoofer. In this range, we wanted to create a subwoofer that delivered world-class performance at a price never before seen. And we did that with the PB1000, which, which has become a lot of, uh, it, from our, our, in the European market, most of our global markets, this has become our number one subwoofer because it brings an extreme performance to a price range that, that was never possible before. And that's our PB1000. It's a, it's a ported subwoofer, but it's not so huge that it won't fit in most rooms and it's affordable. The other one that we launched at the same time and at the same price is the sealed SB1000. Why did we do that? Why did we launch two subwoofers at the same price? Because our, our vision for this subwoofer was finally a small subwoofer that actually sounds like a subwoofer, delivers deep bass, high SPL, meaning how loud it plays, and defined articulate bass meaning I can hear the different notes, the different frequencies that were intended. That's the kind of thing you should listen to when you're evaluating a subwoofer. Any questions? Have I covered on the subwoofers sufficiently? Talk about, I know we made a promise that we broke, so I want to talk about that because the promise that we broke, I'm sorry to tell you, we, were gonna, we wanted to bring from um, our test facility the first working versions of our newest range, which is our 2000 series. And I know Ronnie announced it, and I'm here to say it's not his fault. It's, it's, it's my fault, but I want to tell you why. Because um, it, it, it does speak to how subwoofers are designed. The way you design a subwoofer, if you do it correctly, first you get the best amplifier you can. And these 2000 series have a, a monster 500 watt amplifier that's capable of nearly 1200 watts of peak power on demand so it's a monster it's amazing as for the price that it's going to be offered at which is in between the pb1000 and, and our top range and closer really to the pb1000 yeah. so you do that and then you work with the computer computer-aided design and you design the best theoretical driver you can but it's theory then you build the prototype of that driver and you watch how it behaves in in testing situation meaning we take it outside because it can't be tested that you can't test it in an anechoic chamber you can't test it in a room because the waves are too long so we go outside we wait for a day where it's not raining so we don't destroy our prototype and we measure to see did it deliver on all those frequencies all that performance and if it did then we have to go back and because we have a five-year warranty on all parts of our products, we have to go back and test this subwoofer driver for 100 hours at full power. There's no way to approximate that using a computer. So we go back and, and, and what most, what, what, does everyone do this? No. What most companies do is they pick the amplifier, they pick the driver, usually one from off the shelf in the, that, that is offered, they match the two of them up. What if the amplifier has too much power for the driver? What do they do? What would be typical? What would be a typical quick way to deal with that problem? The this is a smart group. That's exactly right. And it sounds like a small thing to do. But if you, if you have a 500 watt amplifier and you're only driving it 250 of its watts in order to have a situation where the driver doesn't blow up, that may not be the best possible subwoofer. So what we did was went through one iteration, two iterations, three iterations. Today, I found out, today, this morning, when, I, when I, uh, I woke up, my colleague who was actually working in China at the time emailed me that, that iteration number 15 passed the test. We built 15 different driver prototypes. We thought we would be done after three or four, and we would have this in plenty of time in Denmark. Each prototype first tests, validates to see, can we put all 500 watts of that amplifier into the driver and create an amazing bass experience? Then we put it on a 100 watt power test to make sure that it's not gonna break apart. And it took us 15 
versions. My factory is screaming at me, why do you keep doing this? Why can't we just dial this down? We really wanted something that would, that would set a standard that, that had never been, nothing close to it had been done before in that price range. So um, this morning it passed. So I'm thrilled, but I can't show it to you, so I apologize. Um, does that explain it? That's perfect. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, does anyone have any questions? That's kind of what I wanted to share about subwoofers. Yes, sir. So it's a it's a combination. They're class D amplifiers, so they they're they're particularly optimized for subwoofer purpose. I mean, these are amplifiers you would never use for anything other than than a subwoofer. They're class D. They're meant to do, they're meant to uh, deliver uh, uh, a lot of power without getting hot, and they're meant to deliver rise to peak peak needs very very uh, effortlessly. And then we use. Uh, the DSP to take care of the rest, and that's a secret recipe. And your question, the comment about limiting, limiting is a huge one because people who buy our subwoofers, they want to be able to take it to the extreme level. When I was showing these guys how I like to set up our subwoofer upstairs, they were they were like this. They couldn't believe it because because people want it. People want when they when you're getting a you know, if you buy a Ferrari, once in a while you may want to drive it fast, right? And so. <laughs> And, and, and so we, we try to create a situation with the limiter circuitry where if you get close to where really you shouldn't go any louder, it doesn't do ugly things for, to your ears. So that's, part, that's another one of the arts of making a great subwoofer is how does it behave as it approaches the limit? Is we're always going to limit it so the driver cannot be damaged, but how does it behave as it gets close to that? It takes a lot of time, effort, and programming knowledge that I don't have, but that we work very hard to make sure we accomplish. Other questions? Should we talk a little bit about uh, speakers and how they work in home theaters? Do we have enough time for that? Yes. Sure. Okay. So um, I explained this speaker. I want to give you my sense of the goal of a great speaker. Should a great speaker deliver, do, do a great job on music? Should it do a great job on movies? Should it, if you have it on during the news or sports, should it be doing a great job? Should it be great for home theater or should it be great for a two channel situation? Which should it be? Yeah, I, I honestly believe that. I feel that very strongly. So how do you do that? Well, the goal, and, and listen, it does boil down to personal preference at a certain point. We're very proud of our Ultra Series speakers. They've gotten great reviews, um, uh, uh, actually in Europe as, as well, but especially in the U.S. where we launched them first and, and uh, where people were sort of waiting, wondering what was SVS going to do. Um, but let's forget about my speakers for a minute, and I'll just say what the goal of them was. The goal of a great speaker that you're going to use for different kinds of music, sometimes classical music, sometimes chamber music, sometimes uh, symphonic, sometimes rock, like that crazy rock you were, what was that rock you were playing? It was I, mean, I, I was like, I felt like I was home. And, and, uh, and then also movies, like we're going to play a crazy demo uh, uh, upstairs. And, and also multi-channel music. We believe that a great speaker should have dynamics, it should have impact, it should have excitement, that's the home theater side of it. But it should also have refinement, accuracy, detail, be able to deliver the emotional content of gentler music. So we'll try to, you, you'll make your own judgment of how well we accomplished that, but my, my suggestion to you would be, if you ever are in the market to get passive full range speakers, think about both of those. Because um, very often, uh, if someone wants to convince you that they have a great product, they're going to play the content that works the best for that product. That's just typical. I don't blame people for doing that. My suggestion would be try different things. Try things that are dynamic, that tax the impact of the speaker, and then try things that are refined, delicate, and see how does the speaker acquit itself in that situation. And I would say the same thing with subwoofer. A subwoofer should not just, we're going to play Tron for you. you, have you who's seen Tron? Really terrible movie, right? But it's a great, it's a great demo. And, 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 but don't, don't just get or judge a home theater or a subwoofer based on how it does with a movie like Tron. I would also suggest we're going to play a police demo too, a police concert demo, multi-channel music demo. And you're going to hear the kick drum. You're going to hear this, this uh, uh, timpani. Tim tim I'm not even sure what it is that he's hitting, but very deep drum that he's hitting with a, with a kettle thing. And then you're going to hear the bass. And you're going to be able to distinguish between the different notes 
You know, and that's the refinement aspect. You don't want to hear, when you're listening to a subwoofer, you don't want to hear the same bass note over and over again, no matter what's going on in the program content. You want to hear different notes, different frequencies, and you want to hear them defined. And when the note is supposed to stop, the subwoofer needs to stop. And, and by the way, the damping factor that, uh, was that you that asked that question? You, I'm sorry. I knew it was that general region. Um, the, see, sometimes voice is non-directional too. The, 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 the damping factor is most, uh, most uh, reliably accomplished by a very overbuilt driver. You need a huge motor. It's super expensive, crazy expensive. And we've got a we've got a magnet that weighs almost fifty pounds. What's how many kilos is that? Yeah, you guys know anyway. Twenty five kilos. It's it's a, it's so heavy, um, but that's what you need to control the motion of the driver, and that's more more likely to get a good result than trying to do it from the amplifier side. So that that would be how I would take that. Have I? Yeah, I think you covered. Uh, most yeah. Of it, um, Does anyone have any questions for me? <laughs> Did you have to ask that question? <laughs> so, so I'm a little torn because uh, you know I inherited the company. I, I bought the company uh, with two partners several years ago, and we kind of we wanted to bring SVS into the you know the current millennium, and and uh, um, you know we inherited a, a vision like this. This is a phenomenal product, amazing, amazing product, but it's so big. So we said, well, how can we how can we make this something that is just as extreme and wonderful but but actually could be owned by a normal person who has more of a life than just what looking at their subwoofer <laughs> so so one of the other things i inherit so that that's why we did the sb13 ultra which we think accomplished it and if you check the reviews you'll you'll be able to find your own validation of that but the metal grills what was up with that they're so expensive There's, they have their own tooling that they need i mean and and yet I know what will happen if I take them away. I will be screamed at by the SVS <coughs> fans and community, and we have them, believe it or not. They're fans. They debate us, and what, we're think what were they thinking when they did that? And they're going to think I'm cheaping out because I took away those metal grills. So, you know, Ronnie, and, and actually Ronnie's not the only one. Others have suggested to me that we, we, we create an option so that you don't have to get metal grills. Um, and, and I'm going to look at that very carefully because Ronnie really was yelling at me today, and I don't like being yelled at. So, but he's—I I know you're right. I, uh, I just saw the picture of the new uh, SP2000, uh, and uh, I saw the metal grill, and thinking, oh. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to—I'm going to dig <laughs> into whether we can do it. I mean, the—the the thing about a grill, it's not in and of itself an expensive <laughs> thing, but you have to tool it, and tooling is an investment. So when you tool to when you when you make the investment to tool, you you don't want to just sell to a few folks that don't like the metal grill, which is probably what will happen. But I'm going to see what I can do if there's some hybrid solution, because you are not the first one to ask. And now, I think, how much did he pay you to ask that question? <laughs> okay. Any other questions? <laughs> now, you know we have uh, a giveaway of one of our subwoofers, yeah. right? Yeah, we do. So, um, that shouldn't stop you from buying them, though. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> totally yeah, kidding. We can ensure that's, that's one with the uh, fabric grill, because that's the uh, SB1000 we're giving out. A white version like this today, uh, later on, if you want to stay. <laughs> this is, a, yeah, we, and, and, you know, we created the white one for Europe, actually. Europe told us, you need to have that. And, and uh, so we built it only for Europe. We said nobody buys white subwoofers in the U.S., but we'll do it for you. Lo and behold, we brought in a, a container of them, and we sold out. In the U.S., so I'm like, okay, it shows you what I I don't know anything, obviously. Maybe we got a pound point about the fabric grill. I know. Trust me, I'm not I'm not discounting it. Um, so uh, the other uh, uh, products you're going to hear upstairs, I'll just briefly walk you through it. Um, you, the Ultra Tower is is in a no, it's in the home theater. Yeah. So you'll be with. I'm going to do the home theater demo. Um, the Ultra Tower will be in the home theater in a five. Then we have the big, uh, uh, the bookshelf in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the the so to walk you through the home theater, it will be uh, a five point one system featuring our um, Ultra Towers. This way, I don't have to tell you each of you upstairs and waste all your time. Um, our uh, Ultra Center channel, which is carefully voiced to match either the towers or the bookshelves in a home theater environment, it's a true three way center channel. Um, using the, basically the same components optimized for the center channel 
uh, or, or, uh, uh, configuration as the tower and the bookshelf. The bookshelf is uh, a two-way monitor style bookshelf, meaning it's a large bookshelf. It'll fit on a shelf and it's fine on a shelf, but it's a large bookshelf. And it's both our ultra towers and our ultra bookshelves are designed to be a complete experience, meaning if you are evaluating them for a two-channel situation, do not feel any need for a subwoofer. And Ronnie's going to prove that point because he's going to play, even though we have this subwoofer in here, it's not going to be turned on. He'll do a two-channel demo just around the towers, right? We, we, and we will actually start with the two-channel demo upstairs so you won't get blown away of the, the surround system and then go back to the two-channel. So we will start up. Yeah. And then we can... And one of the one of the things that uh, what we're trying to illustrate, he's got on this two-channel system these beautiful uh, Primare uh, electronics, which you may know about. Which I, I I love this stuff. I we don't have much of it in the U.S., but I uh, I was at uh, Bristol Audio Show in the U.K. and we partnered with Primare and we won Best Sound and Show with their electronics and our our, our stuff. So it's I, it's wonderful stuff. Um, so that's our two-channel with good electron, really good electronics. But then we have other systems with much more middling electronics, including my the home theater that I'm going to demo for you, is very middling. Yeah, it's a uh, 6,000 Krona, uh, yeah. 7,000. Uh, in that range, uh, Yamaha. Mi middle, middle range Yamaha receiver. So what people ask me, how, how good uh, electronics do you need with these? Uh, and what I, my answer is they're fine with the receiver, but they reward better, better, uh, com source, uh, better uh, ancillary components. So it's your choice. But you can, they're going to work fine with the receiver. The other thing that I'll tell you that you won't be able to tell from upstairs, the Ultra Surrounds, which will be hanging on the wall in the theater room, they have a unique feature. They can be bipole or dipole, which everybody does. But then we have a unique dual crossover. We can separate the two sides of the crossover. And I'll show you the speaker when we go upstairs. We can literally make the part of the speaker, the array of drivers that's pointing back towards the rear of the room, one speaker, and the array of drivers that's pointing more towards the front and side of the room, another speaker. So you literally have, you run two wires to it, you literally have two speakers in one box. So you can have a true 7.1 channel experience with only five full range speakers. And when we go upstairs, uh, remind me to show you because it's, it's hard to explain that without showing you is a little difficult. So that's kind of what I wanted you all to know. Does anyone have any other questions for me? Have I occupied the time yes, correctly? Okay. Yes, sir. So if I already have a surround setup at my house without a sub, yeah. will any of them fit? Can I just merge any of them with my existing? So the answer is I would say no. And, and, and that's a great question. Thanks for reminding me about that because I forgot to, to bring that up. Um, we have on... Oh, and I, I think Ronnie's going to try to stick it onto AV Connection site, but you, you guys uh, uh, would have no problem. Mo you know, we have svsound.com in the U.S., and that site, although it's a U.S. site, has a, about 40% of our site traffic is from outside the U.S. And of that 40%, uh, half of it is from countries where the first language is not English. So we, we get a lot of traffic on our site. On our site is a, a Merlin subwoofer matching engine. What it is, you go onto the Merlin page on our site, and you'll see it, we, we, we point to it on many different po at many different points on the site, including the home page. Go to Merlin, we have more than 3,000 different specific speaker models loaded into Merlin. You select your speaker brand, select your speaker model, and Merlin will suggest two or three perfect subwoofers for your speakers, it will give you the exact setting of those subwoofers for your speakers and a link so that you can have a custom owner's manual for your subwoofer for your speakers. And why we do that is, I think my biggest enemy, I don't have any enemies, well, maybe a few, but, but uh, uh, I think my biggest enemy is the person who buys, name a speaker brand that's successful here. Oh, it's probably uh, BAV and Dali and stuff like that. Okay, Dali. And so what? somebody buys Dali speakers. That, that's a nice speaker. Then they want the perfect match if they're going to get a subwoofer. What's the perfect match? So my enemy is, well, you know, B&W speakers, I should get a B&W subwoofer. Not because I know it's the best, but I, I don't want to ruin 
my purchase of my BMW speaker. So we make the case, and we can prove the case, that uh, an SVS subwoofer properly adjusted is the perfect match for your speakers. And speakers, as I said, are a matter of personal taste. I personally believe, and I think a lot of people in my industry would agree with me, subwoofers aren't. A great subwoofer, correctly adjusted, is the perfect match for your speakers. Thanks. That's a great question. Other questions? Did I answer the questions you came here to have, Ant, or was it just to win the subwoofer? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little of both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.